Hello everyone. In this video, I'd like to discuss about a question that I get asked a lot, which is, which is the best inhaler? Many patients will ask me this question, which inhaler should they be on? Should they be on a different inhaler if, for example, they're on Symbicort? Should they be on Foster? Should they be on Ceratide? Should they be on any of the new inhalers? Really, that's a very tough question for me to, to answer because there are a lot of inhalers now. And there's a lot of competition between the companies which produce them. So in this video, I'd like to show you this bag. I have a bag. This is my handy nifty bag of demonstrator devices. So I'm just going to put it on my desk and show you what I mean by this being a tough choice. Right. So there's a lot of them. I don't know if you can see them uh, next to the mic here, but how do we choose one from this myriad of inhalers? And to be frank with you, the simple answer is that it doesn't matter. This may be shocking to many of you. What matters first, and this is really the most important thing, is how you use these things. Because you can be prescribed the best inhaler, the most revolutionary device, the newest inhaler on the market, but if you don't know how to use it correctly, it amounts to nothing. It's probably worse than one of the old ones. Really, all of these are medical devices. So if you look at them, they all have different ways of operation. You arm them in different ways, you activate them in different ways, and then you inhale. So all these things are completely different from one device to the next. So sometimes actually switching to a new inhaler can present a problem because you might end up in a situation where you don't know how to use the new device and your, your for example, asthma control actually gets worse because you're not getting the same benefit as you would have had with the old one. So really technique, inhaler technique is the most important really. And if you get that right, you're one step closer to having the best treatment that you can have. And the other thing to mention is most of these inhalers, they're not perfect medications. So they won't heal you. They won't get rid of all the problems that you have. Generally, your symptoms will improve. You might feel a lot better on inhalers. Say your COPD might be much easier to bear or your asthma might be well controlled, but the condition itself doesn't really go away. Like I said, the first thing is really to have the best symptomatic benefit that you can have and you can achieve that generally by having the proper inhaler technique even if you're not on the most up-to-date inhaler the newest inhaler if it works for you if your life is okay if your quality of life is fine on the inhaler please continue on it and just see your doctor regularly to see if there's any need for a change if there's anything new if your lung function is going down if there's anything that's that's changed really that would warrant a change in your inhaler but obviously, keep in touch with your doctor about new inhalers, because sometimes you might switch to one that might actually make you feel a lot better, or you may have fewer side effects with a different device. But just to show you a couple of these options, so really some of these inhalers we can group in different categories, because for example, you have the reliever inhalers, such as the old Ventolin, the trusted Ventolin, salbutamol, blue inhaler, whatever, it's blue-green, whatever. But like this one, this one, many people use this inhaler. It's been around now for decades and it's amazing. You don't need anything else, for example, for very mild cases of asthma, which are maybe only exercise induced, or if you just need a bit of relief, a bit of extra relief on top of your other medications, this is still a great inhaler if you can use it correctly. Then you have the, the likes of, for example, Symbicort or Foster, different type of Foster, or then the Ceratide. What else do we have here? Let's see, this 4-Spiro device, which is pretty much like a Ceratide, but the generic form. And then all, all these, for example, they do pretty much the same thing. They contain two substances inside. They're a combination inhaler. They have a, a bronchodilator, so a medication that opens up the airways, and that which lasts for maybe about 12 hours and an anti-inflammatory drug, which is a corticosteroid. So all of these contain the same sort of combination, maybe slightly different medications, but with the same pharmacological effect. Then you have uh, devices like the hand inhaler or the Zonda device. So these work with little capsules that you have to put inside the inhaler, crush them, 
and then inhale the powder. And these usually last for quite a long time, so about 24 hours. There are newer inhalers as well that I don't have here on the table, which contain three medications inside. So they contain the corticosteroid, the anti-inflammatory, and then two different medications that open up the airways that have a synergistic effect. The choice of an inhaler is very getting to be very, very complicated. But like I always say to, to patients, it doesn't really matter which device you're on, as long as you're feeling well. It's important to choose a device that's right for you. There is such a thing as the best inhaler for you, not necessarily the best inhaler according to medical knowledge and scientific publications. If you can't use that one, it's, it's nothing. It mounts to zero. So that's why talk to your doctor, discuss, ask them to present to you different options to let you play around with different devices, see how they feel in your hands, see how, how hard you need to inhale from them because that's another problem as well. If you ha have any issues with your joints, for example, if you've got arthritis and you're needing to use some, some of these finer inhalers where you need to synchronize your breathing with inhaling, that might be difficult. Ask if you might uh, benefit from a spacer device. For example, these ones can be connected to, to spacers. Let me just show you one now. For example, this one. So this is a spacer device. And then the inhaler would connect to the end and, and then basically you would just spray a puff inside and then inhale. So all these things can help you find the inhaler that's right for you. But like I said, there are many options on the market. There isn't a best one, I would say. It's important to talk to your doctor regularly. This is really the main thing. If you can keep in touch with your doctor, maybe see them every three months, I'm sure you'll have a much better control of your respiratory conditions. Take care. I wish you good health.